All right, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our GAFE Summit session on, or should I say GAFE, or how do you say that? I don't know. GAFE, I like GAFE. Uh, GAFE session on quick edit video. My name is Wes Fryer, and I teach fourth and fifth grade STEM at Independence Elementary in Yukon. And if you'd like to get to the page of resources for today, someone may have already kind of walked you through these steps, but from the GAFE Summit site, ok.gavesummit.com, when you click on program, there's a link that says detailed sessions, and that detailed sessions page has hyperlinked um, titles for every session at the summit, and those are generally opening up to a Google document that has been created. Mine's a little slow coming up here. Uh, a Google document that's been created, and um, ours for quick edit videography has a link to the website showwithmedia.com. So, yes, I renamed my book and website from Mapping Media to the Common Core. I renamed it showwithmedia.com. So, no matter what the politicians decide to do with our standards, we'll, we'll still be showing what we know with media. So, uh, don't anticipate changing, changing that link for a while. Um, it's just, this is just a little bit slow coming up. Um, to give me a little bit of an idea, here we go. So we're on session three, and there's quick edit videography, and so if you, if you tap that link, that should take you to that, that handout. Just to give me a little sense of uh, who's here today, how many of you are elementary educators? How many of you are middle school? How many are junior high? Sorry, high school? I meant to say that with middle school. And how many are multi-grade, multi, multi -grade, uh, working with more, more than one? Do we have librarians here? All right, do we have any administrators here? All right, awesome. Um, how many of you are working with iOS devices of some kind, iPads or iPod Touches or something like that? How many with Chromebooks of some kind? And how many are Google App for Education? Okay, and of those, how many have given students emails and students can log in? Wow, where are you all from that you're doing uh, student emails? Bristow. Bristow? Ponca, Ponca City? Enid, Sepulpa, Clinton. Okay. Pegs. Norman. Okay, awesome. So in Yukon, I think it's been maybe four or five years that we've been Google Apps, and I've been working in the district for three years, um, went back in the classroom last <coughs> November, actually, to teach STEM. And um, we are not currently giving out student email accounts. So things will be a little different depending on your context, but I hope that some of the ideas and resources that we'll talk about and share will, will be beneficial to you. Um, I want to um, actually point to the, the session I just did on um, sharing student work online. Um, that was in, here in the library in session one. And the reason I want to I point to this is because I really think one of the best ways to think about why we should do this, and, and we, we're going to talk mainly about the how, but we don't want to ignore the why, is to look at examples of student work. And so that was what we were, we were doing um, in, in that session. We were looking at examples. And I gave a few sites. I, I gave Ms. Heim, uh, Stephanie Heim, uh, second grade teacher in Clinton, or is it third grade teacher this year? Third this year. Um, her site, um, I was bragging about my wife, who teaches third and fourth grade. Um, here in Oklahoma City at Positive Tomorrows, and then I had a link to, to my site. Um, I've been using a Google site for our classroom for the last two years, and without a doubt, the thing that has energized my students with excitement more than anything else as far as student work is our classroom YouTube channel. So I have two classrooms side by side, and the second classroom we use as a maker studio so students can create green screen video, they're uh, doing challenges in Minecraft EDU, they're doing Rube Goldberg building, Sphero Maze activities, and actually we swap music now for Lego stop motion, so they're doing Lego stop motion. And so, you know, one of the questions kids have as we publish work is, how do I get to this? How do I see this? And so, um, if you, Independence Elementary School, Yukon, Oklahoma. I think it's a good thing to have this link from your main school site. So if you go to our main school site, um, we've got you know sidebar links here. Actually, this one for faculty and faculty and staff. 
And this is growing, right? But all the red boxes with a white arrow, those are uh, YouTube channels for those individuals. Our principal and assistant principal have YouTube channels. Carrie Smith, one of our fifth grade teachers, just set one up this month. Um, I have one. Our librarian has one. And actually, I need to add to this, we now have a shared one where we are uh, we're doing um, uh, a, a library ebook project. You know, it's, uh, YouTube has changed their uh, setup for how you um, set up your address. Now, you have to have 500 subscribers on your channel to have a custom link. Um, that wasn't the case of like six months ago, uh, but now, like I, I am youtube.com slash Coach Fryer, okay? You could put in Coach Fryer. I was an instructional coach, uh, so I set, when I set that up, so if you just put in that address, you'll go to it. But now, in order to have a custom address, you have to have 500 subscribers. Well, it's going to take a while, probably, to have that happen. So, one thing about quick edit video, number one, I believe all of us as teachers should have a place to share video. And I heard that uh, Mr. Sill, Jim Sill, share this um, on a Google Summit last summer. And this has really stuck with me. Okay, he's Mr. Sill, M I S T E R Sill. Okay, he said it this way Google via YouTube provides all of us with unlimited high definition um, video web hosting for free forever, which is also mobile accessible. And I don't know, there's other things that you can say about that. But uh, this is a controversial thing in a lot of schools, access to YouTube, access especially for students for YouTube. Um, we use a program called YouTube for Schools, and this is a program where we have a filtered um, set of videos that students can access, and then as teachers, we can upload video, and we also, you know, we can basically access all of YouTube when we bypass the filter. So I'm really glad and thrilled that we have the access that we do, but it still presents some challenges. So let me show you an example video to just kind of kick us off, and then we're <laughs> going to talk about um, some different options for, for quick edit video. Um, to tell you a little bit about where we're going, um, how many of you have been uh, creating videos for a while uh, with, with technology? Okay. Do you remember when it used to be so hard <laughs> to edit something and again get somebody to look at it, right? YouTube just celebrated its 10th birthday on Valentine's Day of this year. And I remember when YouTube first came out, I said, who would ever care about that? You know, just watching webcam shots or whatever silly things. I just, I just didn't get it. And um, now we can, we can shoot no edit video that we just shoot and publish quick edit video that we might trim a little bit, like just trim the front or the back, uh, maybe put some music behind or something, or we could do lots of edits. And all video pretty much used to be this, right? Lots of edits. Um, and those are all, these are all um, apps. But, but many of these work on the web as well. And uh, where were the Chromebook people who were using Chromebooks? Are you all using uh, tablets of some kind with students or having them use their phones as far as video capture? Are you all doing that? Because it depends on your context, you know, but many times students will have devices that they can use to capture pictures and to capture video. And so um, I think Chromebooks can be fantastic, but, you know, you don't walk around with your Chromebook, really, and shoot a lot of video, right? So having other devices that you can use to shoot video, and now on YouTube you can do editing. And so we'll talk about some apps that you can do this with, but we'll also talk about the Creator Studio and some things that, that YouTube has done that I think is really great. Okay, so um, on our website for uh, our, our school, we are now doing a, an ebook project, okay? And this is new this semester. I'm working with our librarian. And what better way to introduce this than with a video? So as you watch this, I want you to think about um, both the content of this from a, you know, what, is, what are we learning in this, to also the technical, okay? How do you think we created this? How do you think we, we shot this video? We'll cross our fingers that are, actually, I gotta, hold on a second. I gotta plug in my speakers here. Hang on just a second. Elementary, Dr. Fryer and I are creating an enrichment program for our fifth grade students 
and I guess it will be our fourth grade students also. And we are creating ebooks. Our student. Sorry, we'll pause it for a second here and see if that we're gonna. Our student there we volunteers go. for this project are Carter, Lily, Emily, and Pedro, and they are going to take you through the steps it will take to create your own ebooks. Step one. You write all your sentences and draw your pictures, and then you need to include the question in your sentences. The questions are, summarize the main idea of the book, describe your favorite character and explain why you like them, explain some of the main problems in the book, trace the steps the main character took to resolve the problem, explain why you would or would not recommend this book to read. After you finish your planning sheet, you're going to go to our school website, and you're going to click on ebook reports and over on the side click on the green form icon so you can fill out this form and add yourself to the waiting list and then you will be notified when we're ready for you in the library to make your ebook. Step three, you have to take your pictures and cut them. First you go to camera, take your pictures and you go to the photos. Oops. Technical error. Um, sometimes mirroring is great. Sometimes it's not so great. Um, I'm using a piece of software called Air Server to make my laptop into an Apple TV. And uh, sometimes that happens. So I'll just go to this on, on my regular computer. And we'll fast forward to where we left off in the video. This is called scrubbing. So we can have thumbnails here and we can pick it up where Pedro left off. If we unmute it. Press the edit button. The button says crop and you crop it. You can drag these down to make the picture. Step four, you'll tap on Book Creator, go to New Book, tap Portrait, and then to add a photo on there, you'll press the plus button and go to Photos, go to your camera roll, and pick the cover of your book, and you can make it the size that you want, and then your text that goes along with it is your title, your teacher's name, your first name, and the date. And then on the next page, you'll do the exact same thing as you did on the cover. So here's how you record your voice. You're going to tap Add Sound, and you're going to press Start Recording. You're going to say the text. You can look at your sheet if you need to. The book is about these kids who spend a ton of time on their homework, so they invented a machine called a homework machine. When you're done with your book, you are going to export as a video. Tap on the square that has an arrow and choose export as video. Save video. This is going to save your video to your camera roll and then you're going to be ready to transfer it over to the iPad that will upload it to YouTube. However, make sure you actually listen to your entire video with a friend or with the person who is mentoring and helping you. That way you can make sure you don't have any big mistakes and if you need to, you can edit your project and export it again as a video. After your project finishes exporting, you are going to press on the home button and that's going to take you back home. You're going to find the app called InstaShare and and when the library iPad is turned on, you'll be able to send your video over to that iPad by dragging it in InstaShare, and it's going to send it over to that iPad. Tip number one, make sure not to move the paper when you record. Tip two, make your pictures large in your ebook. Tip number three, speak clearly and slowly. And most important, remember to have fun.
Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes. I'm going to set a timer, and here's what I want you to do in two minutes. I want you to introduce yourself to your neighbor and tell them about your teaching situation. And then I want you to chat about that video from two perspectives. Content-wise, what was there and what was beneficial, and then technically. What do you think technically we did in order to get that 4 minute and 21 second video created um, and published? Okay, go. Talk to your neighbor. googly tip I just learned in my first session just google two minute timer or three minute timer or one minute timer and boom Google just creates a timer for you right there you don't have to go to any separate website um, generally my favorite website for for doing timers is this online dash stopwatch uh, because it's this really big countdown timer that's that's what I usually do but how cool is that you can just put it into Google and then you can then you can start um, I'm going to mute my volume and then I'm going to replay this video. And this is one of my favorite things to do when I'm using video in any kind of uh, situation with teaching, whether it's professional development or with students. Visually, that's it. That's you know interesting to look at. It'll trigger some thoughts as, as we are, are discussing this, um, and it and it just also keeps me making sure I don't go too long too. Okay, because I'm I'm going to stop when that when that stops hopefully. So let's start with the the um, content. What what were some things that were good from this project? Um, and from this video itself, from a content standpoint? Anyone? The visuals. The visuals? What Specifically what? So she's telling you what to do, but she's also showing you at the same time so the child has no excuse not to. It's a show and share, right? And we're showing and sharing. Here's what we're talking about. There's our planning sheet. I've got it filled out. You know, see it. I'm talking about it. What else is good about this? The kids are doing it. The kids are doing it. And why is that so good? There's a huge thing about peers, right? I've even learned this about superintendents. Guess who superintendents listen to the most? Their peers, right? You know, you can bring in some vendor or a consultant or whatever. They don't listen to other people the way they listen to superintendents. Our students are the same way. They listen to each other differently. And so there's that side. Why else would you say it's good for students to be creating like this? ownership of the project. They helped us actually figure out, we had four kids that were our pilot group, and they, they helped us figure out kind of the ins and outs, and how should we set this up, and how should we manage this. What else is good about that? Authentic audience. 
an authentic audience. They are producing this for an audience that's far greater than just our school. Now, the purpose of this was we wanted to share this and have teachers play this. We've got, you know, about 40 teachers. We have 22 classrooms, regular classrooms. And so we wanted a way to introduce this project. So we made this video. We don't have a way in our gym right now to display a video for everybody to see, but teachers could show this. And hey, they're seeing, you know, probably kids that they recognize. And the students are doing this for a bigger audience. Anything else? And did you have the principal, or was that the superintendent at the beginning? That was Joy Zier, who is our librarian. So she okay. is our librarian. So, so you had some ownership for the teachers as far as, well, the librarian's in on it. She can help with the books. She can help with the checkout. She's aware of the project. Absolutely. And from a videography standpoint, one of the neatest things I learned from Marco Torres, an Apple video guru, Yoda guy, whatever you want to say, just like awesome video guy is, there's really two kinds of video shots, broadly. There's, there's an A-roll shot, there's a B-roll shot. The first shot in this video was the A-roll establishing shot. Oh, I'll forward so we don't, okay? This is an A-roll shot with Joy, okay? And we actually do have, um, you know, the title, but we could have put her name or, you know, other information about her. But that establishes where we are, um, what's going on. A lot of the other video here uh, is kind of more b-roll okay it's showing you what we're doing and that if you will look at any documentary or any kind of television program um, that involves narration you are not going to see a talking head very long in fact some of the best videos will start with the backstory and then and the person's voice comes on and then you hear them uh, or then you see them and you say oh and this is so and so in fact I'll I have a great, a, a, I love a, a Google search story from Wells, Maine. Um, it's a great example of that. Okay, let's talk about it from a technical standpoint. How do you think we did this? <coughs> what do you think we shot this on? We got a film crew from, from you know, the news station to come do this, right? I no. <laughs> okay. It was actually my iPhone, but it could have been an iPad. It was an iOS device. All right. Shot the video. No tripod involved. Also, no external microphone. That was a question from this morning. You know, do you use uh, other kinds of microphones or things? I don't know if I, I usually travel with mine. Yes. Um, this is called an iRig microphone. It's $60. It plugs into your iOS device. Um, do you need this? No, you don't. Um, is it kind of cool to have um, an iRig microphone? Yeah. But you totally don't need it. The microphone that comes, you know, built in to the, to the iPad and iPhone, as long as you can be in a relatively quiet place, which a classroom isn't always, you know, uh, you don't need this. But this can filter out a little of the background noise. Um, the first one, though, I let my kids use in my Maker Studio. Somebody, you know, tore the cable off. Wasn't that nice? Mm -hmm. So we're not using one in there right now. And, you know, audio is a, is a challenge in there because there, there's, there's a lot of noise. Um, from a technical standpoint, any other thoughts about what we did besides shoot this on a phone? You had, to, you had like maybe one cut? Not many, not many, but there were some. Yeah. There were some cuts. So th these were different sequences that we shot and then put them together. So any guesses where we did that? In iMovie. But we could have actually done it on YouTube, and I'll show you today how the YouTube create... Um, the YouTube Creator Studio, which was new, I think, this summer, allows you to drop in different video clips that you've shot or Creative Commons licensed video, and you can trim them, split them, uh, do lots of cool stuff right in the web browser. This is pretty new because even a few years ago, you had to do this with software. You couldn't just use the web to be able to edit. And I think, has the Wii video session happened yet here? I think it's tomorrow. Um, I'll show you on YouTube a little bit about editing, but uh, we video, I think in Piedmont, where they're one-to-one -one with all their middle school and high school, they've been using we video because they're Chromebook, so they shoot video with like a, a Nexus tablet or other smartphones, and then they can edit it. That's a commercial <coughs> solution. Of course, YouTube is free. So, quick edit video. Um, Let me talk ab about how, how we transfer videos. I guess I, I kind of showed a little bit about that in the... Um, let me show you some other examples. Ah, here we go. Okay, this is on our, our page, showwithmedia.com. I'm scrolling down. By the way, um, these are 12 different products that teachers and students can make to show what they know. We're doing this one right here, quick edit video. Um, each of these tells you what it is. Uh, some of them have graphics like this. 
workflow, what are you going to have to do? Well, you got to have a you got to have a device to record. Uh, probably you need editing software, but you could use YouTube now. Create your production, and then you could use an external microphone. Um, I'll I'll zoom in a little bit with plus. Here's a. I wish I could get rid of this. How do I drag that out? Um, I like this four-step process for video production. Plan, produce, prune, and publish. Okay? How excited are kids about this part? Not, Not so much, right? <laughs> Give me the device, let me shoot the video. But, you know, the better we plan, probably the better our product. The only Hollywood film, I think, that ever skipped that step, The Blair Witch Project, do I recommend it? No. Um, not a good film. Um, but the planning definitely doesn't have to be as extensive with quick, with quick edit video. In terms of tools uh, for using that, there's a discussion of some tools, but let's go to this playlist of examples. And I'm going to open this up in a new tab. How many of you have made a playlist on YouTube before? All right, hands proud. Yay. Okay, so everybody needs to add this to your list, if you haven't done it yet, of something that you'll learn to create. Creating a playlist of videos. Um, why is this important? Well, whenever you want to share videos with students, um, I think it's a really good thing to have a playlist because it organizes your videos. So here's all these different videos that we have published from our classroom. A lot of these are Lego Stop Motion, my Makers Club, after school they did a Sherlock Holmes video. Uh, so there's a variety of different things. <clears throat> and by the way, this isn't a small aside, we have about 610 students. The last time we ran the Power School report, 10 students, parents said, don't share students' picture online, okay? So that sheet is printed and it's on my desk and students, you know, realize that. My wife's school, they call those kids the red shirts, okay? You're red shirted, okay? We can show your hands, we can show you working and doing stuff, but we're not going to show your face, you know, on screen. So there's all of these videos, but if I click on playlists, then you're going to start to see collections of videos. So here are... 58 Lego stop motion videos, okay, that my that my kids have created. These are all, you know, pretty short. They're doing this in about 30 minutes in a class period. Um, we're just wrapping up our catapult unit where we're building catapults. And so th these are the seven videos I used to show catapults. Um, when I click play, play all, um, all of these videos are going to play sequentially. Ah, and let's talk about this. How can I bypass this ad? Is that an important thing to talk about? Mm -hmm. OK. Um, I use a, um, a Google Chrome extension called Adblock, all right, that's free. And when you install that extension, I don't have this on my personal account, but when you use Google Chrome, you can have multiple Google accounts. So now I could switch over to my school account. And on my school account, I do have Adblock. So now when I view this playlist and I play these videos, guess what? I've got this little red hand here telling me, you know, all of um, the, the ads are going to get blocked. We're not going to see any of those ads. So let's, I won't show all these, but this is a great catapult video, okay? <laughs> In fact, I'm like, I don't know if my golden retriever would be, we can get her to do this, but... That would be a fun little home STEM project to build our own dog ball catapult so that our little golden retriever Willow could fetch for herself. Okay. So a playlist. This is a this is a hot list of videos, and it's and you notice these are from from lots of different folks. Okay, they don't have to be videos that you've done. So add that to your list of things that you want to do specifically after, uh, you know, the Google Summit, or maybe maybe while you're here that you'd like to like to do. All right, examples of uh, some quick edit video. Um, I'll, I guess I'll pause as we go. Uh, Monday, I I hopefully end up doing two days of professional development per. <laughs> per um, month now, and so I was in Manhattan, Kansas on Monday, actually at my, my old high school, and Felix Giacomino, who's from uh, Miami, Florida, and organizes the Miami Device event, rewrote Do You Want to Build a Snowman from Frozen, and performed it on the piano 
as his closing finale for his keynote, and I picked up my phone and recorded it. That's a synchronized keynote with a friend who sang a verse and he had it all, he had it all time. Okay? Alright. Next one. These are my these are my kids uh, the first day of STEM this semester saying what they learned about STEM. And this was in our green screen. Actually you can see our iPad was a little bit too far away. You can see the left side of the of the green screen there fading off the I heard about STEM is that it was the funnest class and that it would be really fun to learn about technology. What I'm expecting from STEM is to have a lot of fun with building materials and creating a lot of creations from those materials. And I would also like to enjoy playing Minecraft with my friends. Hi, I'm expecting a pretty epic year from STEM and I really want to have a lot of fun, do a lot of experiments and stuff. This semester in STEM, I'm looking forward to learn about the Rube Goldberg and the Sphera. My expectations of STEM is doing stuff like this. <laughs> but um, I also want to do the two new things, where the Spiros and uh, the Rube Goldberg stuff. And I also like to do Minecraft, and I want to do some stop motion, too. What I was expecting in STEM was to be able to build stuff and have a great time. And I had a bunch of friends tell me about Dr. Fire and what we were going to do. From, really, from what I've heard about STEM, I have been really looking forward to it. I'm expecting to build stuff and <laughs> What I've heard about STEM is that you get to build with um, Legos and you get to play Minecraft and build in Minecraft. In STEM, I am going to want to uh, do a lot of fun stuff like mix chemicals and do experiments. All right. So that video was created with uh, short clips from each class during the day and then YouTube capture. And that's what I'm going to show you next after we talk about this a little bit is how do we take those clips, quickly put them together, and then share them up on YouTube. Um, this next one was our best Rube Goldberg of the year. I shot this with my iPhone 6, so we got the slow motion. If it was a clear tube or it had been the foam uh, that had the top off, we would have, would have seen this part. But this was a four-step you know, Rube Goldberg. So it, step one was through the tube. The second phase was this really short domino drop. <laughs> the hardest thing was the pendulum was getting that bucket or that pail or whatever to be just on the edge. So with a slight domino push and even a little help from the marble, without extra intervention, it falls. And then we had a second shot. So we had, this was actually a two part and this looks so cool in slow motion. There's part four. Oh, okay. So that may not be that exciting to you, but for my kids that are in Rube Goldberg learning to do that, there was a lot of problem solving, a lot of trial and error, and how cool now that we have this recorded, so every student got to see this, and we celebrated this victory, and, and raised the bar to say, guys, look what you can do. You know, even if we have a short time, you can make a four-part Rube Goldberg in class. Does capture all the effects like the green screen, the slow-mo and all that, or how are you doing that? Um, so the question was, does capture do all of the special, all the special effects? Um, we're using an app called Green Green Screen by Do Ink. Oops, not Do Ink. Do Ink. Um, it's a it's an app for the iPad that's definitely uh, the best as far as being forgiving, not having to worry about wrinkles on the screen. Um, the teacher next door, I'm not going to play this whole video. This is her green screen, okay? This is Don Dukes, who teaches gifted right down the hall from me. Butcher paper that we just you know put up on the wall. That's her green screen. And her kids have been doing a visual note-taking project uh, where they did visual notes and then they 
uh, had their visual notes in the background that they talked about. This is an example. I'm not going to have the audio up, but so Anna made her visual notes about Taylor Swift, and then that's in the background as she's she's talking about it and doing her project. I'll do. Well. Okay, this is my eighth grade simple machine project. It's my daughter, and Sarah. My six simple machines are the pulley, <coughs> the screw, the lever, which here's the fulcrum for the lever. Um, this is my wheel and axle, which is the little car, and I have the wedge, which is the nail. I have this, this is my incline plane, and this, that's it. Okay, so see if it works. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. So I'm not going to play. It is April 29th, 2000. I'm not going to play all of this, but my son, when he was in eighth grade, did one. and. My favorite is the second video because actually it fails, it doesn't work, and then, you know, we make changes and, and get the water wheel to be closer and, you know, that mobile technology, right? That means we should be outside the classroom recording stuff and bringing things in. So, I just showed you a bunch of examples of quick edit video. This time I'm going to give you a one minute, if I can type one, one minute timer. Um, Talk about the value of some of those videos that you just saw. Okay? Talk about that with your neighbor. It's kind of loud. Okay. Um, anybody want to share a thought aloud about those? I like the failure in them. That that you still showed that to show that it's okay and that the correction is. Yeah, this is probably my favorite one of all because it's the process, right? And the process of really designing stuff and making things isn't just, oh, wow, I got an idea last night in a dream and I just made it and it's perfect. Right. You know, it's that I tried it over and over again and we need to be able to see that and making that visible and let kids know that this is how invention and creativity works. You know, we're inspired by other ideas, but we do fail, but then we learn from that and we, we make changes. We try again. But are you filming that? It seems like all your examples have been final products. Yes, this one, the, those last two were, my son was just talking through what he did, how he designed it, and then we filmed the first try, and then we filmed the second try. This are is him talking about that. students and like having them record what they see? I'm sorry, I can't remember. No, it's okay. So, you're, so in your classroom, are you doing that? Are in you, our classroom, um, my kids are making a lot more video than we're publishing. And a lot of what I'm doing right now is helping kids learn how, how to do that. And so just like I, now, now that we've, this is something I've learned about media, is if we only wait to the end of the year and say, we're going to do one project, we might get some great stuff. But if we do little bits all throughout the year, we end up with some compelling things. So like that one, Rube Goldberg, I mean, we haven't had too many four-step projects. So honestly, most of the green screen stuff my kids are doing in STEM class is not that impressive. But they're learning to do it. And they're taking, some of them are taking that to the regular classroom. I guess my question is like on that Rube Goldberg project. Right. I would like to see how they started. Uh huh. Have them reflect That's a great. on what their problem was. Right. And then show how they fixed it and then show the procedure. Right. So her point is like with the Rube Goldberg, it'd be great to have the students reflecting and sharing um, their process for that. I did something like that last semester with uh, Minecraft. We did a Minecraft EDU project with perimeter and area. In fact, if we go to my playlists somewhere, Minecraft EDU ebooks, all right? So these are 
47 uh, ebooks that the kids did, and they reflected on here's what I did, here's what I built, here's what perimeter is. Um, but it, you know, it's the use of that, right? We can we can use quick edit video to be reflective like that, or we can use it to capture, you know, something that's that's happening, talking about it at the time, or we can we can talk about it later. Okay. I think I want to show just one more quick video, and then I want to get into YouTube Capture and show you a little bit of the Creator Studio. The example, I'm going to skip down to number four. This is one of my favorite iMovie trailers ever. Um, it's by Autumn Laidler, who's an who's a elementary teacher in Chicago, Illinois. <clears throat> and, you know, we, we can go down this continuum. Some stuff has been no edit that we've seen today. Some is quick edit. And this one, is, I would put in the lots of edits, because this is a trailer created with iMovie. And this is something you can't quite yet do with a, with a website or with, with YouTube. This, this is like an iMovie on the iPad or, or laptop only thing. But I just, I love this. Let's see how our band looks. great. Now they didn't do that in 15 minutes, right? That took quite a bit of research, finding the levers, shooting the clips, putting them all together. But that was made using iMovie for iPad, and I would still say that's a quick edit because you it's <laughs> compared to how long video production can take when you're doing something like Final Cut or even the full iMovie on a laptop or, you know, something else, um, it, you know, it it it's it is quicker, okay? But that's not this that that's not what we're what we're about to do with uh, with YouTube capture. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to my iPad and I'm going to show you um, right now how my my kids are transferring videos for me to be able to publish. Our students can't log in with uh, with a, a Google account and they um, can't upload video. So I the way that we're configured at our school I have to be the one who does that. So what I'm doing is opening up an app called InstaShare. And I've tried a bunch of different apps to, to do this. And this, by the way, isn't my favorite app. It's just my favorite free app. My favorite app for doing this is called PhotoSync, but it costs, I think, $2. Um, and the way that this works, hey, look, I could send something to Ann Beck. Um, I assume that's, that's it. Um, I'm going to tap over here on the side. What I'm starting to see over here are everyone who's on our Wi-Fi network here, um, here are the devices, okay? And I'm on, I'm on the Wi-Fi network with both of my devices. So um, if I wanted to send something, um, my phone is a Lindial because I'm a, a um, Lord of the Rings fan, if you know about that. Um, so I can drag this over, drop it. Over here, I have to say allow, and then boom, that video, which this is a really short video, transfers over the network over here onto my phone. That is how my students are turning in videos for me to publish. And it's not necessarily, I mean, it's not a perfect solution, but it is a, it's a free app that we didn't have to pay for for our card of 20 iPads. And I have found this so far to be the best way f for me to be able to, to publish their videos. Um, I have on my um, website, on my STEM website, and, and by the way, on all my classroom iPads, we just have a, a, what's called a web bookmark. So kids can just click and immediately go to our site, uh, which is stem.westfriar.com. And here at the bottom, where it says YouTube, 
I've got those steps along with some videos of how that works. They export their photo to the video to the camera roll. They use InstaShare. Here's a screen capture showing how to do that. And then they fill out the video request form, which is still paper. But anyway, this is the process. And the key for me is they write the length of the video in seconds. And you can determine the length of the video by looking inside photos. And then it tells you how many seconds. And that's Lego stop motion movies are hard to tell. Who did this? You know, uh, unlike a book report or something else that has the child's name right on it. So that's the process that we're using now to get videos um, to my device. So let's talk a little bit about YouTube Capture. Uh, first of all, YouTube has two fantastic free apps for iOS, Capture and Studio, which I highly recommend, and I can't really speak enough of, especially about YouTube Capture. As Ann Beck said at lunch, you know, for me it has two. This is my go-to app for publishing to YouTube because I can choose what channel I'm using, I can choose what um, account I'm using, it's just very, very flexible. So I'm going to open up the YouTube Capture app, and I'm going to, I don't really want to capture video. I, I could shoot video here, but we just usually shoot in the, with the camera app or we use that green screen app. And I'm going to tap to see all the photos, or all, sorry, all the videos that are on my device. So everything we see over here on the side, these are all videos that are on my device. Some of these have been published to YouTube, like visual note-taking tips from Wichita, Kansas. There's a little globe next to it, and that one has been published. I have a link, and if I tap that link, you know, this one is actually published. Before I show you how, how to publish one of these, let's talk about settings. Um, you can log in with your YouTube account, and this lets me choose what Google account do I want to use, and then what channel. How many of you have a YouTube account now? Okay, so my encouragement to you is, because I know this is challenging and we're, we're all, you know, sort of pushing the envelope of what's happening in our schools. We need to tell our administrators, our principals to advocate for us. I need a place to share video. Video is the language of our times. Just like I need a copy machine to duplicate copies for kids. Sorry, got to do that. Okay, we're not totally paperless in our classroom. I really believe that we all need to advocate for a place to share video. Does it have to be YouTube? No. But it'd be great if it was free. It'd be great if it was unlimited. It would be great if it let me moderate comments, which is we do on all of our videos. Um, YouTube is not perfect, but it's, it's the best solution I've found, and it, and it is free. So I just think that's something that we want to push for is you know, where can I share my video? If I'm flipping my classroom, I flip some of my lessons, if I want to share student work, where do I publish that? So let's say this is for school. I'm not going to be on my Gmail. I'm going to go to my school Gmail. And so it's going to pop up and say, well, what channel do you want to use? Because I actually now, we have three different channels, or I have three channels that I publish to. One is my classroom channel. One is our school channel, where we've done some short teacher interviews and we shoot some things at our morning assembly every once in a while, and our principals recorded some stuff. That's our official school channel. And then we have a channel called IES Student Projects. How much does all this cost, by the way? Nothing, right? Uh, and I won't play it for you, but you know Gangnam Style, right? The most viewed video in the world. I mean, there, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars, they estimate, Sai earned or whatever he, he, he got you know, from Google showing that video. It's a good thing Google has figured out how to monetize online video. If they hadn't, then we'd probably be sitting here going, gosh, I don't know if it's going to go away tomorrow. But I don't think it's going away tomorrow. I think online video is really big. They figured out how to make money from this. And, I, and, and this is one of the, the benefits is I think we're going to get to continue to use it. So I'm going to choose my channel. I'm not going to choose anything else. I don't want to tweet out the link immediately or share it on Google+. That part you don't do on an iPad, okay? You'll set up a Google account with a laptop or a desktop computer, and the best thing is have somebody help you, okay? Have a tech coach, have the librarian, have, have somebody come and sit down with you, and you do that together to create your channel, okay? You can, by the way, use this app without, without uh, a channel, but you'll just be saving it to the photo roll. What I want to show is how I can make a combined video. And all of these videos here on the side are on my device. When I tap one of these video clips, and I'm just going to use these six second clips, these were just short actual photos um, that we used in a video for my wife the other day. 
Notice that at the bottom of the clip, there are some sliders, okay? So if I want to change where that video starts or stops, that's all I do. And I could now go on to the next step and go ahead and publish. I also, though, have a plus in the corner, and I can add another clip. And usually I would recommend shoot these clips in advance. Don't shoot them with the app. And it'll preview it, and I can say choose, and it'll drop it right in. And so I'm going to actually add three different clips here. They're just six seconds long. But now I have a 17, 18 second long video of these clips put together. At the top it says add music. Okay, copyright is a complicated thing. In general in schools we are very conservative and, and it, the, the best answer for can I use this is it depends. It depends on what you're doing. Are you just putting up a, a straight up copy of a song and just putting it online? Probably not going to pass the fair use test. But if you're making a transformative work and you're uh, using pieces of it, um, and there's you know, parts to that, that would be a great session for us to have, by the way, it's going to depend. Here's how, with this app, you can avoid the whole conversation of, is this going to be fair use? Don't select music from the device. Select YouTube soundtracks. They have about 20 different songs that YouTube has clearance for. You can select one of these. It'll preview what that's going to sound like. Okay, we say we want to have that. When do we use this? When we're not having narration, right? When we're showing kids working, when we're showing scenes that, you know, we just want some music behind, add music, okay? Arrow goes to the next page, and now I can add a title. Now, I'm just going to put on test, and I'm going to delete this. Um, also, I'm going to leave this unlisted, because this isn't a... This isn't a a public video I really want everybody to see. I'm just doing this as a test. YouTube lets you have it public, unlisted, or uh, private. My recommendation is don't publish anything to YouTube unless you want the world to see it, right? Because just like a Snapchat or something else, people can do a screen capture. It's like an unlisted phone number. Could we call an unlisted phone number right now? If we all had the number? Yes, we could. Same thing with an unlisted YouTube video. So I'm going to tap Upload, and what's happening is YouTube Capture, this free app, um, just combined all three of those short little clips, put the music, there it is, there's the link, and I can now copy that link, put that on my website, email it to parents, um, you know, put it wherever I want to put it, put it on our kid blog. It does take a little while, depending on how big it is, for YouTube to convert it, but um, that's the process of using YouTube Capture. I'll just mention briefly, YouTube Studio is basically a tool for managing your videos. So again, you can choose what channel that, that you want. So I'll switch accounts and switch over to my Yukon account. And let's, let's take a look at views on our main um, site. So uh, on our main school site, um, people have watched 560 minutes of video. We've had 390 views. 159 people have watched our choir video. Um, it's had this, this one's just our um, choir singing for our school board with, that we shared online. It's been viewed 76 times, you know, statistics. Um, but here's one of, the, one of the best things about it. I can choose inside the app to edit the video. And uh, editing, editing this video, something's not right. Try again. Um, editing this video is going to mean things like changing the privacy setting, adding tags, deleting it, changing the title. That's all basic. Or under advanced, look at this. Do you want to allow for comments? Yes or no? Do you want to allow for ratings? Do you want to allow betting? Um, I actually prefer to moderate the comments on our videos, let folks comment on it. Um, but this app, which is called YouTube uh, st uh, Studio, um, is pretty new. It came out this summer. And it allows you to, to do some management of your, um, of your YouTube. Um, videos that you've got. So, the last thing I'd like to talk about is basically a little on something called the YouTube Creator Studio. And, and in no way, shape, or form am I going to, to do this justice. <clears throat> but I'm logged in now to my school account, all right, my Yukon Schools account. And when I click up here on YouTube in the corner, um, this is where you 
access something called the Creator Studio. And, and this would be what I would call an awareness level showing, right? You're not going to learn in the next seven minutes, here's exactly how I do this. But I want you to become aware that this is possible because these, this is real powerful and you may want to do uh, more with this and learn more about this. First thing is what channel am I on? Right now I'm on our new IES student projects. I'm going to just switch back over to my classroom channel, all right, for my class. And I'm now going to be able to click on Creator Studio and be inside the Creator Studio for this channel. So since creating this last year, that's pretty cool. We've had 18,036 <laughs> views of videos. And um, I can see the most recently published videos that we have here. The video manager, and there's the test we just did, by the way. The video manager lets me make all kinds of changes to these videos. Um, one of the important ones is under actions, um, more actions, this is where you can uh, change how things happen for comments, all right? This is how I set my videos for, for, for school, allow only approved comments. And that means that I, of the 241 videos that are there, um, in order for a comment to show up that someone else can see, I will have to approve it. Um, you can edit the videos, but the real thing I wanted to show you down here was in this part called Create. This is where YouTube has become a lot like Wii Video. Okay? Here are audio tracks that I could bring in that are copyright friendly, but here's the video editor. And so it is possible for me, and I could get a couple different, um, I'll get a couple different Lego ones. I can drag videos in, just like you might have um, done with. Uh, iMovie or another video editing program, I can drag those videos in and I can actually combine them together just like I was on YouTube Capture. Now it's, now it's going to feel like I'm selling the Ginsu knife, but there's more. You can add text <laughs> because I can add um, a centered title. So I can drag a title on here and I can um, decide, you know, what do I want this to be? Lego. Lego stop motion fun. And so I can, you know, put as many videos as I want. I can add these text um, elements. And when I'm, when I'm done, when I have this video set like I want it, I can say create video. And it's going to create that as a new video on YouTube. Now, it'll take a little time for that to process. Sometimes that's just a few seconds. Sometimes it's a few minutes. But that's awesome. That means with a Chromebook, if you have kids shooting video with smartphones or tablets, they could upload video, and then they could use their Chromebooks to edit it and to be able to share it. Because, and I didn't show this too, but you can do the same kind of trimming and moving things, you know, start time, uh, end time, those kind of things with YouTube. That's very new, and I'll, I'll refresh this because it's probably done processing by now. Nope, not yet. Um, hey, Wes, when they upload that film or that video to YouTube, yes? is that live? So, like live on the channel, and then so the unedited videos are viewable by public? It depends on how you how you do it. Uh, like I would, I uploaded some of those as um, unlisted videos, so they showed up in the channel to be able to edit, but they were not visible for the world to see. Uh, I'll do a quick ad. I, I've been doing iPad Media Camps, which are three-day workshops for teachers, and the second day is all about quick edit video. This will be the fourth year, and the Oklahoma City one this year will be right before the fourth of July, June thirtieth through July second. For this workshop, what I've learned to do is just create an account that we all share because it takes some time to have people set up their accounts and all that kind of stuff. But if you, what I saw Jim Sill demonstrate last year at the Google Summit was you can take Creative Commons licensed video. So he showed a cool one from Niagara Falls. He, he, he did a, a little scene that he shot and then he put a Niagara Falls video right behind it. And so it doesn't just have to be stuff from your channel. That's where that licensing thing comes in, where people have Creative Commons licensed it. And so you can, in the editor, bring in content from other channels if it's licensed openly for, for reuse and for remixing. 
but that's kind of a kind of an advancement. Question for you on yep. that. Compared to how you edit in iMovie, without a doubt, is the most user-friendly tool for, uh, for editing video, and I can't speak highly of it enough. Um, a couple years ago, um, I think we set up the channel to be YPS Showcase, maybe? Take a, take a risk here. Um, well, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm not going to be able to bring it up. Um, the district had asked me to... Um, shoot teacher of the year video interviews with kids and with teachers and using an iPad 2 and iMovie um, I went on two days to 13 campuses at each campus the librarian had everybody ready to go but we just shot the video put them in an iMovie titled it subtitled with with you know who they were and published them to YouTube no way that could have been done I think without without iMovie and even YouTube capture you know could have been used for that can you okay. tell us a little bit about your students' responses to their work being shared, and how has that impacted the student's side? Okay, so Tammy's question is, can I talk a little bit, and I'll just do this briefly, because I know we're, we're almost out, out of time. It, do they constantly ask, how many hits does our videos have? Yeah, so I mean, I have kids, like when I say, what do you want to be when you grow up? I have some girls, uh, last year, who said, I just want to be famous on YouTube. I'm like, really, honey? <laughs> There's going to be better goals for you, but we didn't have that full conversation. So yes, there's a lot of excitement about being able to share um, and being able to have content on YouTube. Like I said, most of what's on our channels, like Lego Stop Motion, Rube Goldberg stuff, we have book reports that we're doing. Uh, we do have some videos that kids have been in and kind of starred in. You know, in general, students have quite a bit of enthusiasm about, um, about sharing content online. But I'd say this, it's, you know, this isn't all about, let's just... It, Technology isn't really what's made this exciting. It's making stuff. It's building things. It's collaborating. And, and I think it's another layer to the cake of saying, yes, and we'd like to be able to share that. Um, Amy Leffelholtz, who teaches at Lakeview, the other 4-5 STEM campus, has a STEM wall of fame. And she takes kids' pictures and puts them up. And I want to do that, too. And that's part of this idea that, wow, if you've done a great Rue Goldberg, I want to share that because I want other people to be inspired by you. And I want to you know, have that to, to share with the other classes. I feel like they produce higher quality of work knowing that their, their work may be shared in a video? It definitely does. It raises the bar because it helps increase their expectation of what's possible. And just like with that Rube Goldberg, now, hey, guys, your classmates did a four-part Rube Goldberg. You can do that, too. You know, go for it. All right. So um, in conclusion, I would, uh, I'll say this. I mentioned this in the first session. The easiest things to have happen at a Google Summit or any kind of technology summit is, number one, to be overwhelmed, and number two, to get scared, <laughs> okay? Because we're all kind of scared and overwhelmed already. Everyone's on a journey. Every one of us has different experiences with technology, with kids, with teaching, and it, it's about taking baby steps. So the quick edit video, this isn't the first thing that I would teach you know, teachers and, and do professional development. Interactive writing, narrated art, those things are more entry level. But there's a lot of appeal to video, and there's a lot of power to video. Remember that you don't have to share student faces, right? You can show student hands at work. You can have pictures that you, talk, that you put in that kids narrate. There's a lot of different choices. And that's really what Show With Media is set up to be, is a, is a menu to hopefully inspire teachers, especially with those examples of wow, my kids could do that. And when you go home and back to school and your kids create something that they share, they will inspire other teachers and kids far more than you or I will, right? Because there's something about locally created projects that just resonates differently than something that somebody made in Yukon or in California or somewhere else. So I wish you luck. Stay in touch. Thank you guys for coming.